why is there perchlorate, a toxic chemical in rocket fuel, PCBs, mercury, lead, flame retardants, dioxins, and DDT in our bodies? Where did it come from and should it concern us? Yeah, I, as, I, as I said earlier, um, we, the, the babies are being born with these chemicals in them um, because the moms are being exposed. We're all being ex exposed to um, these um, persistent chemicals in our environment. And yes, we should be concerned. And it's important to eat organic food, really important. Um, the good news there is that um, when they did blood tests on people who were not eating organic and then they switched out to organic, it only took about three days before the, the, the pesticides clear from the blood, which is really good news. Um, some of the other chemicals are, are more uh, persistent and so detoxification, like the program at Hippocrates, for example, will help to, to detoxify uh, your blood that way. But um, getting off of GM foods, um, and then using natural products on your skin. Our skin is our lord, largest organ, and so um, think about the, the deodorant that you use, the toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, I mean, every single day. Lipstick, mascara has uh, mercury in it. <laughs> um, it's just because it's on the store shelves does not mean it's been tested for safety. So, you know, really take that in. And we need to be our own advocates and, and choose the most natural products available to us. I just want to add to that as well. I think that it's important for us to remember that we live in a culture um, where we are surrounded by things that are toxic to the human body. It's in the air, the water, the food, the lipstick, everything that you put on in, that's in or around your body that is, quote, new to nature, um, has the capacity to uh, I impact your health. The, um, d uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who's one of the founders of functional medicine, coined that term new to nature, and I think it's so perfect because it is almost impossible to keep track of the number of chemicals that are out there. And it's like, every year there's a new one to worry about. Like in the 70s it was lead, right? And we were worried about, we found lead in the paint and the gasoline and we figured out that was a neurotoxin and then we figured out how to get it out. And then, you know, then it becomes mercury and then we're worried about cadmium and BPA and BPS and it goes on and on and on. And it, it's almost impossible as a normal human being with our pea brains to keep track of all the things that can harm us. I think the important thing to remember in this modern industrial world is that we're just better off using anything that is as close to nature as possible. And anything that is new to nature, you have to just question, is this safe? We don't know because there isn't the regulation that we would need to keep us safe to um, regulate what goes puts, is put on a shelf, what's in, uh, available to us in the market. So I think the way to sort through it all is just to stay as close to nature as possible. That's like a few products, on a, or a few ingredients on a label if you buy something that's manufactured. You know, it's, it's really about getting back to basics and making things as simple as possible. Well, I'd like to add something to this discussion. Um, when we were at the National Academy of Sciences, we went through what I, what I learned later I would call whack-a-mole. We'd come up with one bad chemical, DDT, then it would be another one, uh, ESB, then it would be another one, uh, DES, and then this approach that you only need to focus on one chemical is part of the problem. But there was an old cartoon called Pogo, and um, there's a, I think some of you are familiar with, we've met the enemy, and uh, ungrammatically, it's us. We demand a lot of things for ourselves that turn out not to be so safe or so healthy. And just as Michael Pollan has said, you need to you know, eat less, and if I may modify this, you know, live high in the watershed and eat low on the food chain, we have to think about how we approach the things we put on our body. And as both Beths have said from time to time, our skin is our largest organ. And anything that goes on your skin gets into your body. Uh, that People don't generally appreciate that. And coconut oil is one of my favorite products for almost anything. Uh, you can eat it, if you can, and I tell people with new babies, if you can eat it, you can put it on your baby. 
And there are other things you can safely use. I mean, cornstarch and things like that that are closer to less synthetic materials will be better off. But we're not responsible for the perchlorate that's in our blood and in our urine. That came from rocket fuel, rocket fuel that was used to defend this country. And we can't blame the Department of Defense for defending the country, but we need to hold them to a high standard of cleaning up where they have contributed to, potentially, the increased rate of breast cancer on, mass, on uh, Cape Cod because of the plumes that have been identified that have not been fully understood to contribute to but appear to be one of the factors causing the increased rate of breast cancer in that part of the world. The problem we face with chronic illness, as you all know, is that it has many causes. And because of that, we get very easily confused when we come up with one, it's whack-a-mole, it's that, it's, it's lead, it's mercury. Let me just be careful, lead and mercury are natural products. And they used to be used as, um, in fact, as food preservatives. Mercury and arsenic were food preservatives in the 17th and 18th century. So they're natural and they're not always, you know, we, we would all agree they wouldn't, they're not the things we want to be able to use. But I think the larger argument is that we as consumers, it's something that Beth, that uh, I think we were on a discussion of this maybe years ago. Bella Abzug once said, we need girl cots. Do you remember that one? Boycott means say no, right? Girl caught means the fact is women are responsible for purchasing most of the things they bring into their households. 75 cents of every dollar is, re women are in charge. So we have to start demanding the right to buy healthier products, safer products, products that are not be toxic. I don't, I think we need to get a list from you of what, what practices and what people are doing. I'd like to know more about how we can promote healthier B, um, because that's part of, that's, that's a new one to me, and I'd like to know how to do it. One of the papers that I wish I could have found, or could, could find again, about three years ago, was between uh, German and English uh, uh, researchers, that they were analyzing whatever pesticide was out there, and they were taking the active ingredients, 3%, 7%, and all the rest were the inactives, and the study actually started with, we know this article will get buried, but read it while you can, and I just didn't save it. So they went out and, and um, took the active ingredients of whatever pesticide, and they had uh, five human genome lines that they were analyzing it against, and it was safe to feed your kid. But then they started adding in the half-life extenders and the penetrators and the accelerators, and the compound, these were all the inactive ingredients, but these are all secret, you know, they're, they're not active because the company's able to say that. But they found that once you started putting these compounds together, it was lethal to like four of the five human gene online. So the, the message that we are being told is it's safe for bees because we're using this one piece as, a, as the active ingredients, not being told about the inactives. And so as we're even now understanding, as I'm working with the ARS, um, Agricultural Research Sciences uh, Services, when these farmers are out there putting, um, I'm trying to save money, I'm putting sprays into my fields, as they're putting the sprays out there, it says, uh, do this, but you're adding now um, adjuvants. So you're adding uh, three or four other chemicals, because while you're spraying it, let's put them all out there. The chemicals are changing in the tank. And so what was maybe once safe is now um, no longer safe. And so it's- Your adjuvants can be things like kerosene. You know, some of your adjuvants well, can be really xylene, can be really nasty, volatile organic compounds. By themselves are maybe fine, but when you're mixing these chemicals, chemicals together, they don't stay isolated in a tank. And so when we look at this, um, you could probably say all of your, your pharma and, and whoever you want, your chemags, they can all pretty much say, it's not my fault, okay? But when you start adding the thousands of things together and you're, you're, you're you know, the fibers in my clothing, coupled with my underarm deodorant, I mean, all these things, it's, it's the, the longer compound. No one can research it, so you can't blame me. I get it. It doesn't make it right, but it is. There's something no, known as the body burden, and so it's like all these chemicals add up and add up and add up, and then it starts to compromise our liver, which helps to uh, filter everything. A livers get backed up, a lymph gets backed up. That's the problem. So you want to 
just choose, the, as Beth was saying, as close to nature as possible. And I dedicated my book to my grandmother because I know she used baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, vinegar. You know, these things work. They worked back then, they still work. I use baking soda as a deodorant. It works like a charm. I put it in a salt shaker and I sprinkle it and I put it under my armpits and I'm good for the day. Um, secret, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I grew up with that stuff and it's just, uh, when you read the label, you know, it is shocking. It's, it's really shocking. Even some of the natural deodorants, um, the number one, in the stick deodorants, in the natural Tom's deodorant, it was uh, propylene glycol, which is found in um, antifreeze. You, and you're putting that on your skin, <laughs> right near your breast. I mean, it's, so simple solutions, and they're out there. And, and we're lucky because more and more great products out there, natural healthy products are being um, offered to us. So that's the good news. Mm -hmm.